my part. And that's what I'm saying, you know, for you, you know, you got to start somewhere, you know, why not start with Carol? Because you deserve that kind of happiness just as well as anybody else. Maybe I could get some help from my family, my brothers and sisters, or my dad. Try at least getting support from someone because it didn't seem like I had anyone down in Phoenix. I came home to go home and try to get these dear feelings outside of me so that I can work and be straight. And then I think about what my children must have to go through in their life because of what their life has been. <sighs> what they've had to go through life and what they've had to see. We ended up in the hospital with a nervous breakdown. Going to the hospital, paddy wagons. And seen so many hospitals. Was, how is it going to stop? Who's going to stop it, Carol? I am. It wasn't easy for Carol. Like many of the rest of us, she had a very difficult time dealing with alcoholism and the splitting up of her family. Well, Betty and others like her can only help a person so much. But the thing is, is that you have to do it yourself. You have to go within yourself and look at your life the way it was and then do something about it. I've always wanted to help Indian people since I've been with the movement. And uh, the more education I get, the more I can do for them. Uh, my name is Carol Warrington, and uh, I'm a caseworker here. I would uh, like to help you in any way that I can. What is your name, please? OK, it's Dallas Howard. Mm -hmm. And where are you from? I'm from Arabi. Do you no. have an address? I became militant because of the things that were happening to my children, and I couldn't do nothing about it. That's the only way, only way that I could strike out at anybody, and I had the opportunity to do it, and I did it. Being militant helped a lot of Indians wake up. When the Indian movement was started in Chicago, we became whole human beings again. You know, we started feeling like living again and trying to be what we should be. I can relate to you, you know, with a drinking problem. I went into a halfway house, which if you're interested, you know, I could set you up with it. This was the beginning of it, and everything that we had to go through, we had to go through in order to uh, become what we are today. Oh, my dog. My vagina with it. Oh. And that pronounce them out. We have to succeed. That's a must. Meo, miigwech. Where did it go? In oppressed people. I've heard Indians say that we're a dying race, we might as well give in. And I don't feel that way. Indians' lives have to change, you know, and we have to look at ourselves now as there's a lot of things like keeping our land, our reservations intact, keeping our land base, that's important and the culture, the stories, you know, and the, the, of our people, that's important. Our languages, that's important. My own inner strength, I think, was always strong, even when I was little. There was something inside of me, you know, that just uh, didn't want to die, you know. I always had a somewhere, you know. We're just people. We're people that are trying to survive.